Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our international afternoon. As we've got five really amazing uh, speakers joining us this afternoon. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm very, very excited. Um, I would recommend keeping an eye on the chat because usually there's some good discussions going on there. And also, if you have any questions for our speakers, there's an ask a question uh, box where you can ask any questions you have, and you can also vote on other people's questions in case we can't get to all of them. Uh, so each speaker will have about the 25 to 30 minutes, so, but that includes questions, so just you know what to expect. And I'm going to welcome Tom to, from our studio to talk about our markdown. So Perfect. welcome, Tom. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to uh, be here today, virtually. And uh, I do miss actually getting to go to uh, the UK. I went to London back in November, and it was, it was wonderful. So I'll be talking about uh, Marvelous, our markdown today. Uh, the short link to get to today's slides is bit.ly slash Marvel RMD, and that will be on most of the slides. You can find it. Um, for this talk, I really was just excited about talking about our markdown. I'm very passionate about our markdown, and kind of it's a play on words for the Captain Marvel. So going higher, further, faster with Marvelous, our markdown. So. When you tell a story, when I give a presentation, I really like to think about the hero, or in this case, the heroine's journey. And so for Captain Marvel, sans spoilers, um, in act one of this story, the story is set up. For us, that's here's the tool, our markdown. Act two, some complication arises for our heroine. Here's the problems we're trying to solve with our markdown. And act three, the heroine finds resolution. For us, here's a solution you can do with our markdown. However, unlike storytelling, coding is never a linear journey. So today is really less about beginner, intermediate, expert, and the linear journey between them, and much more about expanding your tool set with things like our markdown for the right job at the right time, basically enhancing your skill set that you already know with R or other programming languages. When we think about our markdown and kind of the taxonomy or the use cases for our markdown, uh, most people immediately think of literate programming or like creating a report or a presentation. But there's a lot more to that. And so I've broken it up into four, four kind of sections, literate programming, data products, control documents, and then templating. And we'll be going through each of these in uh, pretty good detail. So the first section of uh, our markdown and kind of the classical use is, is literate programming. And our goal here is to capture code, text, and comments to the reader or to yourself, and then output in a single document. The idea of literate programming was originally introduced by Donald Knuth. And the idea is, again, that a computer program is given kind of an explanation of its logic in natural language, such as English. And this is interspersed with snippets of macros or traditional source code from which you can compile and kind of generate output. And our markdown fits to this idea, like you have a YAML header that controls some parts of the R markdown and kind of what you're creating. You have code chunks that execute R code or other programming languages like SQL or arbitrary code. And then you have text, which is really there to help inform either yourself or the reader about what you're trying to tell them with this report or with this document. But really the idea of interspersing code with real text and kind of mixing back and forth between the two. Something really exciting about our markdown, and this is coming in our Studio 1.4, uh, you, you probably are familiar with you know, seeing our markdown like this inside our studio. You have your code chunks, you have your text, and you can create some graphics and the like. In 1.4, we're actually releasing uh, the visual editor, which allows you to see the uh, formatted version of this in real time. So it gives you spell checking, it gives you conversion from like a header three to actually a formatted header. It does your code chunks and it does highlighting and all sorts of other wonderful things. And this is all possible through the visual editor mode. So inside the newest R Studio 1.4 coming out soon, you can click this button and it will switch from the plain text to the formatted version or back and forth, which is really exciting. The visual R Markdown mode has its own whole web page, and you can look at the guide here in terms of what's coming. But in, in short, this gives you uh, visual editing for all sorts of Pandoc markdowns, so conversion of markdown to you know, formatted text. Citations, you know, LaTeX uh, formulas and technical writing, uh, spell checking, integration back with the source editing. So 
You can still check it into version control and expect that your changes are going to be there. Uh, tables, graphics, all these wonderful things. So that's coming down the road for our markdown and really will help with the writing portion for the literate programming side. This kind of helps again with the idea of R Markdown as like the MVP of reproducibility, where R Markdown uh, can be either the minimal viable product in terms of like an R Markdown document has to knit successfully, so the code has to run to save the output. But it's also like one of the most valuable players of reproducibility in that you can have your source code and your output self documenting, so you can keep your code and your output closely tied together. And it's still difficult and human readable and source control. So not only do you get kind of the interactive portion, the knitted portion, but you can then put it into something like Git and still be able to see where changes were made. So all sorts of great stuff there for reproducibility, especially in science. If you're interested in kind of seeing how other people use our markdown and see how other people write our markdown and, and go through literate programming, uh, Dave Robinson and Julia Silk both do weekly screencasts using Tidy Tuesday datasets, which is a project I run on, on Twitter through the R4DS online learning community. And the idea here is that they take a novel data set that they've really never seen before, do some machine learning, do some statistical analyses, and kind of explore the data all inside R Markdown. And they both have YouTube channels that they host all of their videos at. So I would recommend checking those out and seeing what they're working on. Importantly though, like this literate programming is not just for R. And for many of us, we use R in conjunction with all sorts of other languages. Uh, maybe R is like a, a wrapper around SQL or even interacting with Python or working with you know, CSS or JavaScript code for you know, beautiful presentations and all sorts of other things. All, all together, there's 52 possible language engines you can run in knit R, meaning that you can run 52 different languages inside R Markdown. So there's a lot of power there, whether you're just working in R or you're working in R in conjunction with all sorts of other programming languages. So we have the kind of the quick idea that R Markdown's really cool. It gives you this header and text and code. You can put it all together. And maybe you know, you're, you're doing literate programming, that's great. For a lot of other people, they want to create something that others are consuming. So they're maybe less interested at the beginning about creating something that only they're gonna look at and really creating rich uh, content for others to consume. So the idea here with a data product is you can use R and R Markdown to generate the final output for consumption. The data products you can create in R include things like reports, whether it's PDF, Word, you know, pure Markdown, rich text, or HTML. Presentations, um, things in Sherengen, so like uh, web-based presentations, uh, PowerPoint presentations, iOS slides, Beamer, which is late tech, all sorts of different cool presentation styles, uh, entire dashboards. So Flex Dashboard can either create a R Markdown dashboard, meaning it doesn't have to have a server backend and you could you know, move it around as you wanted, or in conjunction with something like Shiny. Uh, you could build entire websites, either a personal blog or a knowledge repository with things like Blog Down, Hugo Down, Distill. Uh, or entire books. Maybe you want to write a book and publish it. And a lot of the recent R books have been published through Bookdown. And lastly, one I want to spend a little bit of extra time on, because I think some of the other output formats people have seen before, is HTML widgets, things like uh, DT, which is data table, uh, Reactable, Plotly, Crosstalk, and all these other cool packages that allow you to get essentially like a JavaScript or web page like experience just inside R Markdown. So this is a little bit of code. And for all of today, I'm going to be using the Palmer Penguins data set, um, which is a lovely data set as a kind of a replacement for Iris. Um, and it has some information about penguins in Antarctica, their species, their sex, some uh, kind of information about their body size and body length and beak size, all sorts of fun stuff. So for this example, I'm not going to run through every single line of code, but the highlighted portions. Uh, we first use the crosstalk package to create a shared data set, which means that this data set can be shared across multiple um, HTML widgets, which are uh, wrappers around JavaScript, meaning that they can be interactive even after you've uh, knit them out into our markdown. So Plotly gets you kind of interactive plots, basically like a ggplot, but now you can hover over text and interact with it. Reactable is an interactive table. So you can filter, you know, rearrange, do all that stuff. 
And then by combining Plotly for the graphic, Reactable for the table, and Crosstalk for the data for both of those to cross-communicate, you can then create some checkboxes or sliders and get essentially a Shiny-like experience without a server backend, although you could still use it with Shiny. So this is really the R Markdown chunk that creates the content. And if we look at what this looks like, we run a little video here. I now have a interactive graphic, a table, and some sliders. And it both affects the graphic and the table interactively and together. So any changes I make to my slider bars or my selections affect both the graph and the table. And both of those, I can still kind of do selections at either this level or in the graphic. And really it gives me a rich kind of interface beyond just, um, you know, here's a static graphic, here's a static table. You can put this into an R Markdown document, share it with others, and they're able to interact with it and kind of find things they want. So I really think that HTML widgets and specifically crosstalk really gives you a lot of power to create rich data products in R and R Markdown. The third idea about R Markdown, you know, we've covered literate programming for creating documents and reports. We've created data products for all these rich things you can build in R. Control document is one that might be more new to a lot of people. And the idea here is that our goal is to modularize data science tasks and use R Markdown to control our overall code flow. So you can think of things like if else statements in R, that's control flow in R, but this is at a little bit bigger level, like overall your data structure or your code structure with R Markdown. There's a really, really good presentation and blog post by Emily Reuter, and she put together a bunch of examples about uh, R Markdown driven development. Basically the idea of taking something from uh, a random one-off project into a robust kind of uh, grouping of data and analyses and scripts, all the way over to the idea of like this polished R Markdown where you have functions and functional programming that are running most of your uh, kind of code. And you have this, you know, very consistent project and the ability to work with R Markdown as overall control document for, for your project. So she has a whole presentation on this. So it's kind of outside of scope for today. I recommend checking it out. But again, thinking of it as the R Markdown really is the polished version. It, it takes all of your little scripts that you're working on, integrates your data, creates some outputs, and generates your, your final uh, output documents. So for us, kind of the idea of first idea we'll talk about with control flow is the idea of parameters. So in an R Markdown YAML header, you have like a title, a date, what type of document you're trying to create. And we've added a new portion here called params. These are basically parameters that are going to be evaluated inside the body of the document. So here our first parameter is species, and it's set out as Adelie. So that means wherever you see params dollar sign species, you'll actually get replaced with whatever text is right here. So this is gonna say, filter the penguins down to the Adelie species. And then we also have it here in the body of the text where we're putting in saying, these are classified as Adelie and the distribution of the Adelie penguins are shown below. So we put all this together and we get a nice output report, you know, penguins document, a little histogram. We have data about 344 penguins. And then you can see Adelie and Adelie have been input into the document. There's some more examples about how to use parameters at these links. But in short, you know, this gives you the ability to take one report and create many different outputs from the same report. We could change the species to Gen2 or Chinstrap or many of the other penguin species to create different reports for them. Another idea is you often have little R scripts that you want to run. So rather than having to copy paste these around, you could still use external R scripts and actually use the read chunk from NITR to pull in specific parts of those R scripts. So here I have penguins.r, it's got two pound signs, a space, and then four dashes. This essentially turns into a code chunk, just like you would expect with a R Markdown code chunk, this portion here has a name. So that means I can reference it in my R Markdown document. So I've read in this document, this penguins.r file, and then I can call just this part of the code with smaller penguins. And now I don't have any code listed in R Markdown, but I'm still pulling it in from my R script. And I do the same thing with plot penguins, and I call it by name, plot penguins. And it generates the same report we saw before. But now I have some external code that uh, someone else created for me, and now I can reference it into my R Markdown document. 
Another idea about using R Markdown for control flow is the idea of child documents. So this is similar to what we did before with .R, but now we have full .RMD or R Markdown uh, kind of documents we're pulling in. So we use you know, all of this code. So this is .R Markdown. So it's got you know, some code chunks, some text and code chunks. And I can basically embed this into a separate document by just calling it by reading it in by name. So this code chunk, it's saying the child is actually equal to report.rmd, which is this report. And it will put all of this stuff into this one code chunk and run it. And again, we get the same report, but this is a very lightweight wrapper. So now our kind of parent document is very small and our child document has a bulk of the code we're working on. But we can go even one step further. So maybe you have, if a specific criteria is met, use this report. And if a criteria is not met, use this other report. So we have the same document, you know, using all the code we want, but now we're only going to import that uh, report we showed, the Adelai report, if the species is in fact Adelai. So species select is a new variable we've added and we're assigning chin strap to it. So it's saying child document is imported if species select is equal to Adelai. Species select is equal to chin strap, so it's actually not going to import this whole uh, RMD document. So it's blank, essentially. But you can imagine where you have a document you're creating about you know, some uh, information about the NHS, and you're saying, if this criterion is met, use this report. If something else is met, use this other report. So some really cool stuff you can do with control flow within a document. Another really cool idea in kind of referencing external R Markdown documents is the idea about Blastula emails. So Blastula is a package that lets you write HTML-based emails in R through R Markdown. So you can actually generate an entire email document that could be sent out to someone referencing ggplot or embedding data or code or entire presentations, whatever you have, like you can do all of this. So in short, we have again, our reference code. So penguin plot is the name of this code chunk. And then down here, I'm using RCO connect to render a document, attach an email through Blastula and send it out. And the email portion up here, we can see that this HTML document is actually a Blastula email. So this is gonna create an email. It's gonna load the tidyverse and the Palmer penguins data set. And then it's going to pull in all of the code from this parent document, so penguin plot, and then create that document. So it's going to filter to a specific species and create a ggplot for us. And this is what the email looks like in your inbox. So this is the preview. And so you could literally send this email to somebody and they now have a ggplot in their inbox. So you can imagine a world where you're automating something and like I get daily information about COVID cases in Texas. And every day it's like, here are the number of cases and here is the graphic of how things are changing in the major regions of Texas. All this information you can get in your inbox automatically. This is all done through the idea of like a parent R Markdown document that has most of the code and then a child R Markdown document, which is this penguin email, which is what is actually being sent. This is all, I'm, I'm doing it through Connect, although you could run, um, you know, some of this through things like uh, Gmail, you can run it through there. But for, for me, like I have access to RDStudio Connect because I'm at our studio and we have many customers who are using it. The idea is that our Markdown and our Studio Connect are very tightly integrated. So our Studio Connect is a hosting and execution platform for Shiny, our Markdown Plumber for APIs, and for some of our Python friends, also things like Jupyter, Flask, Dash, and Streamlit. So for me, I do a lot of scheduling and execution of R Markdown for all sorts of things. So self-service parameterized R Markdown for people who are not as tech savvy. So creating some of those HTML-based reports with crosstalk and kind of the pretty graphics, um, doing some of my ETL work. So, you know, scraping data from Twitter or taking some SQL jobs, running them and outputting to a specific data set. Um, automated reports with logging history. So like checking data quality or doing a daily report, like I mentioned about COVID cases in Texas where I live or running very long model training steps and saving the model out. So for some of the cross-validated random forest models I run, they take like two to four hours. I don't wanna sit there the whole time. So I'll just run it uh, through RStudio Connect and get the model out at the very end. And lastly, what I showed just before this, sending Blastula emails conditionally on a schedule. So I can go in here and take any R Markdown document, click schedule for uh, output, 
and then send it to run every single day. And then it will send me an email update to myself and any collaborators uh, automatically. So some really cool things you can do with control flow with both our Markdown alone and our Markdown plus connect. The last idea about our Markdown that I'd love to cover is the idea of templating. And what we have here is Captain Marvel uh, is having one of her friends play around with her suit colors. So it's changing this really cool neon outfit. When a lot of people think about uh, templating, they think about changing the overall appearance. But for this, we're really talking about templating with like reports or reusing as much code as possible. So the goal here is don't repeat yourself generate either input templates or output documents from code, specifically with R and R Markdown. So going back to our previous example with parameters, you know, we can create a report for the Adelaide penguins by just you know, keeping Adelaide as the parameter in our YAML header. We can reference this in the code and it generates a very specific output. However, we can change this parameter programmatically. So you can either go in here and delete Adelaide and change it to maybe Gen 2, which is a different species of penguin. Or you could call it from the command line, from the R console. So here we have our markdown render. We're using our penguin.rmd document. And we're providing parameters for species as Gen 2. So now we've used all the same code we're doing and generating a brand new report for a different parameter. And we could do this as many times as we wanted. This could be one report. This could be a thousand reports. You could use our Markdown render to generate any number of reports you wanted just by changing one parameter. And importantly, it doesn't just have to be one parameter. This could be five parameters or 10 parameters that are in a single document. So you can imagine creating kind of a boilerplate uh, report and then changing out some specific parameters, maybe a date, maybe a region or a specific hospital or something and generating these really rich R-based reports just by changing one line of code and rerunning the report. What you might be thinking is, well, I don't want to change the code every single time and, and run our Markdown render a thousand times. Is there a better way to do that? Absolutely. So you can basically run either a for loop or use uh, per, which is another package for repeating function calls. And the idea here is that you're taking the exact same report, but running it in number of times. So in this case, we're running it three times. So our for loop basically goes through and says, for uh, unique penguin species, run this report and name it after the penguin uh, as the output document. So it's gonna say Adelaide, Gen2, Chenstrap report for each of the different penguins. Alternatively, I could write a function. So here I'm wrapping the R Markdown render function in my own custom one, where I'm providing penguin as a parameter. And it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna write out the report and say the output file is equal to the penguin's name, dash report dot HTML. And now I find the distinct species of penguins pull those out, save it as a character, and then walk through this and generate three new reports. So now it'll generate all three of my reports on demand. And this could be, again, a thousand reports or five reports or just one, but it'll loop through all the unique ones and generate this, uh, a report for each of those specific parameters. And importantly, give them the right name. If you don't do a naming thing, it'll just rewrite over itself, but by providing an output file, it'll name it something reasonable where you can say, oh, this is for Adelaide, or this is for this region or this date. The other idea is rather than generating a bunch of output documents, maybe you wanna generate you know, uh, 15 different examples of the same kind of command. So maybe hospital reports uh, all in one document, but you don't wanna retype the code 15 different times. So here we have a similar document. You know, we've got tidyverse, Palmer penguins, and now we're sourcing an external .r file. So source is gonna pull in all of this code, or really this function I've created called multiplot. And if we're kind of looking at this briefly, it creates a level three header. Uh, it finds some penguins, gets their uh, flipper length of these penguins and how long their arms are, uh, puts together some text about observations, and then creates a short graphic about them. So it's gonna take this function and we have this uh, loop output where the code here, the multiplot is gonna be run three times. So it's gonna generate this same kind of output for each of our three unique penguin species. 
So this is really similar to what we did before, but now it's running within a single document. And importantly, I have the results equal as is as a R Markdown code chunk option here. This basically means that take the output and reevaluate it. So don't just take it as plain text, but take it as text that we want to evaluate as code. So we get take the unique penguins, pull them out, and then walk through and apply our multiplot to each of the different unique penguins. And it will generate a report like this. We have a section for Adelie with the information about Adelie and a, and a scatter plot about them. We have a section about Gen 2 and information about the Gen 2 penguins. And just below this will be the Chen strap, which is the third species of penguins. But importantly, I, you know, I only had to really write one chunk of code and it generated three outputs. And again, this could be 50 outputs or 1,000 outputs or whatever, however many you need, all within a single document. All right, so the, the last portion is a little bit about whisker versus glue. And it's kind of a play on words here. Whisker versus glue is one versus two. So I love the glue package for writing uh, kind of text in R, basically pasting the results of R into a character string. So if I take glue, it says there are n row empty car rows in the empty cars data set. So this is the number of rows in the empty cars data set. So there are 32 rows in the empty cars data set. Basically, anything within these brackets will be evaluated as R code, or it will pull something from the environment, so like an output you created. And that's with glue. And you could do this all sorts of things. This could work inside mutate, so you could do it inside a data frame or at, at the command line. The other one here is I've now created a rows in variable or an object, which is again 32, which is the number of rows in the MT cars data set. But now with whisker render, I'm saying there are double bracket rows in, double bracket rows in the MT cars data set. So whisker uses two brackets, glue uses one. They both do very similar things. However, whisker is really intended to be used with like plain text or writing out external files, as opposed to glue is something I would more use like inside a data frame or uh, in interactively. A little bit better example with whisker is for the Tidy Tuesday uh, project. Every week I have to write a readme, so like a .md file, uh, basically saying here are the information about this week's data set. So in short, it pulls in you know, uh, a raw template. So it reads all the lines from a dot markdown file I've created. But then I'm passing along the subject and the data set name and this core URL. And it will take all this information here, rewrite that over the template, and write it out as a new file called readme. So rather than me having to copy paste things around, I run this command once, use tidy readme, and it will rewrite uh, a report for me. And this is what the output looks like. So it's replaced the date, it's replaced the year, the week number, the name of the data set, the name of the data set, and the URL to this specific data set of interest, along with the name of the data set down here below. So this is now something that technically I could reuse. Like this markdown document is, is not really knitted, it's just plain text. So you can imagine using Whisker with our markdown to write a input template to create an external document that you can continue analyzing or working with. So you can build up the bulk of your document via a template, then type in uh, custom commands that you need. So let's show you a quick example of that. So here with Whisker inputs, I have an R Markdown document. I've got my double brackets, meaning that whatever is inside here will be replaced as a species. I have that in a couple of different places here, here, and here. And then the very bottom, I have another variable called long prose, again, with double brackets. So when I read this in, it's going to uh, you know, replace any of the double brackets with the parameters I give it, so species and long prose. And once I uh, write it out, this is what the document is that I actually get. I get Adelaide penguin, Adelaide Adelaide, and then some information about mating rituals in the Adelaide penguins. Importantly though, this is still plain text. I haven't created like an HTML document or a PDF. I can still open this in our studio and continue editing. So I could add in the bulk of some automated uh, templating and then add a little bit of custom. Well, actually in this region of January, 2020, a lot of crazy things happened and this happened with the penguins. So you get kind of the best of both worlds in terms of being able to template, but still be able to work with it. So the whisker function that I used to actually create the document we saw previously is called use penguin template. 
and it passes species and long prose as our function arguments. So to read in my template, it will then fill the template back with species and long prose, and then write it out as the name document. So it'll say, you know, for the species, the Adelie report dot R markdown. And I pass it an object called species and long prose, and it will again fill that in inside of our template to create this document right here. Which again is still just plain text. So I can keep adding my own code, running new code, adding text, whatever I need to do. I can still keep working with it. So I think this is really, really powerful for semi automated reporting. Basically, you want to do the bulk of the kind of re repetitive work automatically. And then you can do your valuable uh, analyst work or your custom work on top of that once you're done. This example is used pretty heavily in use this. So the idea of like use a template. So the use this package provides some boilerplate to doing something similar if you didn't want to write out your own custom functions. But with the code I showed you today, you could you know, adapt it and really use it however you'd like. So that's been kind of a quick run through for all the marvelous things that our Markdown can do. So you have the power now, and I hope that you have fun using it. Uh, there's some fantastic follow-up information if you're interested in the things from today. Emily Ritter has a, a document called our Markdown Driven Development, where she walks through the idea of our Markdown as like a control document or a project control. Uh, Charlotte Gelfin put some together some work with Whisker in doing templating for the Ontario College of Nursing, I believe. Um, that's similar to the whisker examples I showed. I have a blog post that goes into this a bit longer. And there's two wonderful books by uh, Yue, Christoph, and Emily um, going through, you know, how to do all the things in our markdown and some cookbook examples about how to solve specific problems. And again, the slides for today are at bit.ly slash Marvel RMD. All right, that's it. This is a quick picture of my dog who loves watermelon. And I think we may have some time for questions. Okay. Thank you. I think we're all super excited to go and use our markdown. I <laughs> have not heard about half of these features before, so it's really neat. Um, so we've got a question from a different Tom. So has there been any thought for a neater solution to the loop result at this cat approach? Well, it works. It feels a bit hacky. Yeah, no, I, I feel yeah. So if it really matters if you're trying to do something within a document or controlling just creating things externally um so if you're trying to repeat within a document the results as is is the only really the only way to kind of create sections repetitively you could obviously like run a section and like pull in things from externally like i was showing pulling in either external.rmd or pulling in .r files um, as specific code chunks but to repeat within them, the results as is is the only way to get it to reevaluate plain text. If you don't do something like that, then it will create output, but it will just you know think, oh, this is text. Don't don't evaluate it. So it does feel a little you know potentially clunky. But I think if you do uh, you know th this code is still readable in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, taking the idea of like this is specifically for loop output, so naming it results equal as is. And then being careful to combine things with the level headers you want. There's a nice section in the R Markdown cookbook that goes through this and some other kind of um, Pandoc stuff you can do that's beyond uh, the, these basic example. Excellent. I think Tom will be happy with that. Uh, so just one more last quick question. So any chance mm -hmm. the visual Markdown editor could be extended to work for sharing gun presentations as well? Um, yeah, that, that's something I, we're pushing for. I, I don't think it's not available today, but it's something we'd love to do. Um, I, I definitely hear you in terms of, you know, Sharingan has, you're writing a lot of pure markdown and trying to evaluate it. So something like Infinite Moon Reader from the Sharingan package does give you the mm -hmm. ability to um, see the output document as you're writing the input. So there's a function called uh, INF underscore MR for infinite moon reader. And the idea with that is that you run it with your document and every time you save, it will show you the output in real time with the HTML. That's part of the tricky part with showing it in visual R markdown is that you're really showing plain text versus Sharingan is showing you a JavaScript library in your viewer pane. So I, I would recommend infinite moon reader for that. 
No, that's that's good advice actually. Thank you very much. I think we have to move on to the next section, but I really Perfect. enjoyed this, and I will definitely uh, get more creative with my own mark down after this uh, and judge by the comments. So will many others. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um,